In this video, we will talk about multiple myeloma, the signs, the symptoms, pathogenesis, diagnosis, and treatment of multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is a malignant disease of plasma cells uh, in the bone marrow. It is the second most common hematological cancer, generally affecting older people. There is no known um, genetic component, uh, hereditary genetic component, or definitive environmental risk factors. Let us see what some common signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma are. So many patients present with back pain, infections of the respiratory tract, anemia, which will result in tiredness and fatigue, renal failure, and proteinuria. People, patients with multiple myeloma also suffer from fractures and dehydration. And uh, finally, investigations, including scans, will show lytic bone lesions. Looking at a vertebral, um, a ver uh, sorry, looking at a um, vertebrae and bone marrow, uh, we find that bone will suffer from lytic bone lesions. The vertebrae is also a site for hemo um, hematopoiesis, the production of cells uh, for the blood, um, which arises from hemopoietic stem cells. So if we were to zoom into the bone marrow, here we have a hemopoietic stem cell within the bone marrow. Normally the hematopoietic stem cell will eventually make B cells and then plasma cells, which will event will, where the pla and the plasma cells will um, eventually reside in the bone marrow. Normally the bone marrow contains less than 5% plasma cells, which are the long-lived plasma cells and they and these guys they secrete antibodies remember plasma cells secrete antibodies to help fight against infection the antibodies secreted are normal consisting of a light and heavy chains now in multiple myeloma the hemopoietic stem cell shifts production mainly to produce more B cells and then finally plasma cells thus in the bone marrow we end up with more than 10% plasma cells occupying the bone marrow. And now these plasma cells, they secrete abnormal antibodies. 75% of multiple myeloma cases, the antibodies are abnormally produced in high amounts. And plasma cells also produce l just light chains. So they, all, they produce abnormal antibodies and they produce light chains only. And these light chains only that are being produced are called the paraproteins. The main antibodies produced or that are found associated with multiple myeloma um, are high amounts of IgG and IgA. Let us now look at the patho pathophysiology and the interaction that occurs uh, between these abnormally high amounts of plasma cells with other cells in the bone. Firstly, we just need to recap some cells found in the bone and bone marrow. So the bone contains a number of cells. Osteoblasts are cells that build bone. Osteoclasts are the cells that break down bone. And then we have things called bone marrow stromal cells, which regulate um, a hematopoiesis. So looking at this diagrammatically, here we have osteoblast, an, an osteoblast, which will secrete osteoids, uh, and which together with minerals, calcium and phosphate, they will form strong bones. Osteoclasts, on the other hand, break down bone by secreting hydrochloric acid. The breakdown of bone results in the release of calcium and the phosphate, and the calcium here will enter the plasma, the blood. The interesting thing is that osteoclast activation, so the bone breaking cells, the bone breaking cells activation is regulated by osteoblasts, which express rank L. When rank L binds to rank on osteoclasts, this will stimulate osteoclastic activity. But osteoblasts also secrete another molecule called OPG, which inhibit this interaction, thus inhibits or decreases osteoclastic activity. Now let me introduce the bone marrow cells 
and the pathophysiology of multiple myeloma. The bone marrow stromal cells normally regulate our hematopoiesis, right? But in multiple myeloma, these bone marrow stromal cells will interact with these uh, cancerous cells through receptors and cytokines. Adhesion of um, multiple myelomal cells to the bone marrow stromal cells results in cytokine-mediated cell growth, survival, drug resistance, and migration. So essentially, the bone marrow stromal cells helps the multiple myeloma cells survive and grow. So let's look, so when the multiple myeloma cells survive and grow, they then do other things that, that help, that help themselves. So the multiple myeloma cells secrete many cytokines and they have s some um, bad consequences for the body. So for example, the multiple myeloma cells can secrete interleukin-3, which actually decreases osteoblastic activity by inhibiting osteoblast pro progenitor cells to become osteoblast. So basically, it just decreases the production of osteoblast. Um, the multiple myeloma cells also secrete DKK1, which inhibit uh, OPG production by osteoblast, thus resulting in an increase in osteoclastic activity. Multiple myeloma cells also stimulate osteoclastic activity through MIP1-alpha and through expression of rank ligand. The osteoclasts can self-stimulate itself and the multiple myeloma and the bone, bone marrow stromal cells through interleukin-6. So this whole, basically the whole cycle, it, this whole picture shows an amplification of multiple myeloma cells osteoclastic activity and a decrease in osteoblastic activity. So osteoclastic activity is basically promoted and osteoblastic activity is reduced. When osteoclastic activity is stimulated, this will result in bone, bone breaking down. An increase in osteoclastic activity will lead to fractures and lytic lesions and also will result in more calcium entering the body. So in the blood again here, we have hypercalcemia, which can cause nerve problems and dehydration. In the blood, there is also paraproteinemia, -prote with bits of light chains floating around. The paraproteinemia has some bad effects. And remember, the light proteins, these paraproteins, are being produced by the multiple myelomal cells. So these light chains, these paraproteins, are small enough to get filtered through the glomerulus of the kidneys and, and it can you know, lead to renal failure in 20 to 30% of cases. The light chains are also urinated out, they're peed out, which is a clinical feature of multiple myeloma. When light chains are urinated, it is known as Benz-Jones proteins. Multiple my myeloma, as I mentioned at the start, also leads to anemia, and this is through several mechanisms. Three. The first is that there is a shift of hematopoietic stem cells from myeloid progenitor to lymphoid progenitor to make more plasma cells. Two. Overproduction of plasma cells clog up the bone marrow, stopping red blood cells uh, being formed and entering the plasma. Three. There is also the, the kidney failure failing kidney, which results in decreased erythropoiesis, uh, erythropoietin production, and so decrease in red blood cell production. There are many investigations that can be performed in multiple myeloma to sort of rule out other problems and to confirm that it's multiple myeloma. And these investigations include blood and urine tests. In the blood test, we can detect anemia as a result of abnormal uh, red blood cell level. We can see an increase in paraproteins, paraproteinemia, a decrease in normal antibodies. We see hypercalcemia as a result of increased breakdown of bone. We see increase in urea and nitro nitrogenous basis as a result of renal failure, as well as an increase in creatinine, which is a measure of renal, uh, renal competency, I guess. Urine tests show urinary Benz-Jones proteins, which are the light chains that are peed out, remember. And then bone investigations include bone aspiration, bone marrow biopsy, which can show more than 
plasma proteins in the bone marrow. Uh, X-rays can show osteoporosis, and CT scans can show um, lesions of, of, um, of, of the bone and soft tissue. So those are the investigations we can perform in multiple myeloma. The actual diagnosis of multiple myeloma is, one, the presence of monoclonal plasma cells in the bone marrow, 10% or greater. So this is through bone biopsy. Two, we presence of monoclonal antibodies, or you know, the paraproteins in serum or in urine. And three, one or more of the following. So I, I have an acronym HRAL, or some people use CRAB, same thing. So I use HRAL, H is for hypercalcemia, R is for renal failure, A is for anemia, and L is for lytic bone lesions. So that's how you diagnose it. And to treat multiple myeloma, chemotherapy and radiotherapy of the vertebrae, vertebral bodies, or uh, whichever, uh, wherever the uh, plasma cells are located, the uh, neoplastic plasma cells are located. So chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And I won't go into more, more detail than that. Hope you enjoyed this video on multiple myeloma. Thanks for watching. Bye.